In this brief video, we're just going to continue with conditional statements with the exercise that we we're just working on with an if-else statement, except this time we're going to put it in a for loop to control how many times it happens so we don't have to keep nesting it. In our last video, we were working with our conditional.py file, and we were working with our if-else conditional statements. And basically, we set up a condition where if you entered Python with lowercase, capital P, or all caps, you got a welcome statement if you got it right. If not, then you had a message that said the password is incorrect. And in order for the user to enter it more than once, then we had to embed another if-else statement inside of the else statement, which got kind of confusing. So we're going to look at a different way to do this. So I'm just going to delete this from here and even delete the prompt from here. So that basically we're back to where we have if you get it right, if you get it wrong. And it starts off with our input. What we'll do is we'll put all this code inside a for loop. So I'm going to put for i in range. We did that on a previous video. And let's just say we're going to do it three times and I'm going to put a colon and hit return. Now, keep in mind, now that we're putting all this inside of a for loop, we have to indent everything correctly. And that means this has to be indented, this has to be indented, and that has to be indented. So keep in mind and be very aware of how these are being indented. And there's little shortcuts you could do in VS Code that'll help you do that so that you don't always have to hit the tab key. But right now, keep in mind that we have like one level and then this is the second level, and then these things are at a third level of, of indentation. So that's what we want right now. What we're doing right now is this would basically happen three times in a row that we do this, but let's just try it out. Let's just see what happens right now. We're gonna enter the password, and I'm just gonna put in Python, and it says welcome, but now it says enter the password, and I'll put in Python, and it says enter the password again, and I'll put in Python, and it says welcome and it's over. So this puts it in a range of three times. So it, it iterates three times and it runs this code three times. Now the problem is we don't want it to run three times. We want it to run three times if they get it wrong, but if you get it correct then it should be over. Now one way to make it end after it runs one time is actually, and this only works for loops, it's called a break statement. And if we put break in here that means once you get it right it'll basically stop it. So let's see what happens with just that one little break statement in here. So I'll enter gibberish first. It's incorrect. And then it says enter the password and I'll enter gibberish. And it says the password is incorrect. Now I'll enter gibberish again. Now it just ends. Now, we ignored the break statement because we never did the if. We never met the condition of putting in Python. We did gibberish. So basically what happens is three times it went through once, we entered it, and it went passwords incorrect. And then it looped again a second time. It skipped this because we didn't meet the condition, and it printed the password is incorrect. So three times it printed the password is incorrect. So let's try it getting it right. And the idea is we want to get it right the first time. So this time, let's put in Python, and it says welcome, and it's over, meaning it's breaking. It's not telling us to enter the password again. So what's happening here with this for loop, it's allowing us to go through three times if you get it wrong, and if you get it right, it stops right away because this ends it. Now the only downside to this is we are specifying a number. Now you could set it up so that it could happen forever. It could keep going until they get the password right, which normally you wouldn't do. But that's something where we would incorporate a while loop, where we can have a condition while it's true, it could just keep going on and on and on until it's met. With a for loop, we actually just put in a certain number of times. But for what we're doing here, this is actually worked perfect. So I'm not gonna go through any more with this. Let's just stop here and just understand that we incorporated a for loop with our password input and then used a break statement to break out of it once the condition was met, but it allows it to continue any number of times that we specify if the condition is not met.